Hello fellow developers. In this video, I want to be talking about components. Basically, I want to talk about how does the framework use components and um, why are they such an integral part. And uh, to explain that, first, uh, what are components? Components are Unreal's way to add functionality to actors. Again, actors are everything around us. This is an actor, this board is an actor, this camera is an actor, I am an actor, my hands are actors, this thing behind me is an actor. So everything in this world is an actor, and we can attach components to any actors. And uh, components allow us to, to add uh, a lot of functionality to them that, uh, so we don't have to add, uh, so we don't have to implement them on the actress itself. So for example, me grabbing something, um, there's a grab component on here, which is a interaction component found in here. And uh, I can also uh, latch onto that, which is also an interaction component. And this wheel rotates, and so this is a state component also found on this actor. Um, and it can also snap onto things and uh, stay there. So this has a snapping component, which also is a component that has this feature to, to attach to onto something. So um, basically, this actor by itself does not have any functionality. We just added a lot of components to them, and they add all this different behavior to it and allows us to do all these kind of cool different things with it. And this, I think, is a very cool principle because this way we can add tons of interaction and states with this world. And it's very easy to do because you basically don't have to do any programming. You just have to add these components to our actors and they allow you to do all these cool things with them. Um, and uh, I want to talk about um, the different components but mainly I want to talk about the interaction and state components because the principle of them is extremely um, is an extremely important and maybe not be so intuitive. So interaction components, um, as I already explained, are our way to interact with something. So for example, I can grab something. Um, I was able to latch onto onto the wheel, but I can also have an interaction of, for example, looking at something. So for example, if I have this light bulb and if I look at it, I can turn it on, and if I look at it again, I can turn it off. So this has a grab component on it, and it also has a gaze component on it. But um, it also has a state component on it, which uh, defines that the uh, light should go on and off. So um, there's already happening some communication in there. Um, for this, uh, to explain this, I brought this wheel with me. So um, this wheel has a interaction and a state component on it. Let me let me quickly move that away. Um, maybe I'll keep that here so you can see it. So the interaction component is a selection component. Remember, these are all categories. So there are a lot of interaction components, there are a lot of state components, a lot of pawn components, many snapping components, a lot of multiplayer components, and so on. So we we have. So these are just categories of components that we are using. And our interaction components allow us or the world to be interacting with something. Um, so for example, I could be interacting with this wheel via select component. And the select component basically emulates a mouse button. So I can press on it and it would start turning. Um, but the turning is not a part of the interact component, it's just um, that the selection is a part of this uh, as, as the interact component. Um, the turning is a state component. So this wheel has two states. It can either be on or off. It can either be turning or not turning. So um, the state component, um, which is an active component, um, can have two states, on and off, or active or not active. And this is what's happening if I select it. So the interaction component is communicating to the state component. And both of the components can, uh, are on the same thing. But uh, to explain this concept a bit further, I have ex uh, I have brought in another example. So le let's quickly go over here. And yeah, this is, uh, this is another example that I have. Maybe position the camera a bit better. So this is a door, and I want to open this door. And so I have this button, which has a select component on it, which is a interaction component. And it is communicating with a state component on 
this door, which is an open component. Open component is also a state component. Okay, so if I press this button, it opens the door. And if I press it again, I have to go around the door because it, um, it, uh, yeah, my, my laser doesn't go through the door. So I can open and close the door, obviously. And this is this is very practical. Um, and you you may ask, okay, why why do we differentiate? Like, why do we have the um, why do we have the interaction component and the state component? Why why are they two different things? And um, basically, it is a way to uh, uh, for us to allow us to uh, combine all of the different interactions with all of the different states and all of the different kind of states components. So maybe I don't want to open. Uh, maybe I don't want to press on a button to open this door. Maybe I want to open the door by looking at it, or maybe I want to have two buttons. So w one button here and one button on the other side opening the door, and um, so. All of these things would have interaction components on it, and all of these interaction components would be talking to the same state component. And a very important other thing is the state components basically define the whole world, uh, the whole state of our world. So every every object or every state of every object is being defined by a state component. And this way, um, in a multiplayer scenario, uh, we can uh, simply say, okay, this. Um, uh, this state comp all state components are fully replicated, meaning the door will be open for any other guy. So, for example, if uh, our if another mannequin would come in, and he would see, uh, yeah, he would come in in a multiplayer environment, he would see the door also be opening uh, or open, because the state component has changed. The state component uh, does the replication for you. And basically, you as a programmer don't have uh, you as a designer or adding the functionality to the door don't have to do anything anymore, because the state components by themselves replicate perfectly. So again, this door is just an empty actor, and the state component defines the whole state of uh, the door, and is also replicating the state of the door. So this is also uh, this is already a very very important concept. So um, by keeping this kind of concept, you uh, ensure that your world is uh, multiplayer compatible and uh, you can easily add uh, your own multiplayer, like replicated functionality by just using these kind of state components. And one thing I wanted to explain, let me, maybe, let me come a bit closer, I have this pad. So how, do, how does the interaction component uh, talk to the state component? Let me, let me quickly come over here, I, have, uh, I, I brought a pad. Um, yeah, like that. Okay, so how does um, the interaction component on, on this button talk to the state component? That's what we call a component definition. So the component definition is a structure that uh, con uh, consists of three entries. And the first one is the name of the tag that uh, you want to search for. The, the component tag to search for, that's basically a very describing name. So we want to search for a component, um, uh, For we, we set on the interaction component, the tag of the open component of this door. And then we want to define, okay, on which actors do you want to search on that? And that's going to be the, the door itself. Like, um, so the button wants to search for the door, so we entered the, the door actor in there, and it's searching for all tags uh, or all components that have this tag on it. And um, that's how the, the our interaction, our selection component is able to find the the door, uh, the, the, the open component on that door. And there's also a third entry, which is trigger also self. And what this does is it basically act, um, adds the, uh, the, the own actor to, to this list. So for example, on this on this wheel that we had, it's both uh, there's both a state component and a active component. So uh, let me let me re quickly remove that. So there's both a state component and an and an interaction component on here. So it would have said trigger also self because it would just be looking for a component on its own uh, actor. I hope that makes sense. Um, there are tons of examples that you can find in the um, 
in the example maps, which uh, represent exactly this kind of interaction between interaction components and state components. And basically all the buttons that you can see uh, use this functionality to trigger some kind of state changing in, uh, in the world. And uh, you will see the component definition, the trifecta of uh, component tag to search for, actors to trigger, and trigger also self. You will see that everywhere. And this is how um, a uh, an interaction component or any component tries to find another component on either another actor or on the uh, on on the self actor. And um, I've also brought another example of how uh, the communication between the different actors actually work. And uh, this is a bit more complex example and probably a bit more game-like. So I have this button over here. Let me quickly come into the scene. And I don't want to stand on the button itself. OK, hi. So uh, this is a standardized button. And I also have a cube here. And um, there are a lot of components communicating with each other in this kind of scene. So first of all, obviously, I have a grab component on this cube. And so I can grab it. I can also grab it with my hands, but I want to grab it with this cube, uh, with, with the laser, because it makes it a bit easier. Then I have a interact component. Let me quickly turn a bit around. I have an interact component on this button. And this interact component is actually not a laser component, so I cannot press anything with the laser here. Um, it's actually an overlap component, which is also an interact component. And this overlap component is set to communicate with a state component on this on this button, uh, which is a drag component. That's the same kind of component that allowed me to uh, to rotate the, um, the 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 lever uh, over on the other side. Um, there wasn't a real yeah. Let's let's say it was a lever that that allowed me to to latch onto the lever and and rotate it. It's the same kind of a component that allows the button to to actually move inside. So what it detects, it, it detects an overlap, and um, it will communicate this overlap um, uh, location to to the um, to the drag component, and the drag component then uh, moves according to the overlap location. So on this actor, we already have an interaction component, which is the overlap component, and we have a state component, which is the drag component. But it doesn't stop there. So obviously, you saw in the background, you saw um, our slider moving, and you saw these these texts moving and stuff like that. All of these things are different actors, and uh, they have different components on them. So um, this has, for example, a percent component on it, and this knows how to receive percent uh, values. Since this button has a value from 0 to 1%, um, this is the, the, the value that it trans transmits to um, to the slider. But it also transmits true and false values, um, so on and off. And it also transmits va uh, name values, so button in, button out, button in, button out. And this, again, is a percent value. So um, we have uh, different state components on all of these different actors, which allow them to uh, receive different kind of information. And um, state components are uh, uh, all have interfaces. They all have state interfaces. So our different state components can I have a beautiful list right here. Um, let me quickly pick that up. OK. Our different state components uh, can receive different kind of uh, information. So for example, this, uh, this button sends a percent value. And the percent component has a percent interface, but it also sends a binary value, which is a Boolean value. Um, so it can set it to true and false. But for example, this door, uh, the, the, the open component, also uh, uses a binary interface because a door can either be opened or closed. So this has the, the open component is implementing a binary interface on it to allow um, to allow it to receive a binary information. So the select information, uh, so the select value sends a binary information, and uh, this button also sends a binary information, so either in or out. Um, or it can also send a name. So this button on the right has a 
name component, which is using a name interface. So you could uh, train your actor to be doing different things on different names. Let's say you have a you have a slider with five different entries, and you want to be switching something according to these sliders. You could use the name uh, state component to be setting. Okay, this is my first state or is this my second state or is this my third state and then your actor could be doing something upon this state so um this is i hope it's not, uh, not too complicated but this is basically how the the communication between these different actors work and uh, once you have wrap your head around it and and kind of uh, think in this way of how you would define the state of the world using state components um you are sure to build uh, everything multiplayer compatible and um, and easily accessible by by all kinds of um, interaction types so remember i can uh, combine all of these kind of interactions with uh, with uh, with however i want so i could for example instead of this button being uh, triggered by the overlap component, I could just use a to use a select component, or I could use um, the the latch component to be interacting with that. So there are tons of kind of ways that you you can combine all these interaction and state components, and it uh, allows a lot of versatility. And once you got uh, once you uh, got a feel of what kind of interaction, what kind of state components there are, uh, it makes it really easy to build a completely replicating multiplayer ready world. Because uh, remember that um, without executing any code, uh, our our mannequin here, um, let's pretend he's a multiplayer uh, guy, another guy in multiplayer, he would also see this button being moved in. He would also see all these kind of values because they're perfectly replicating because they are using these kind of state components and the state components themselves are replicating and are always synchronized between uh, different players in the in in the world. So this is basically all I wanted to say about uh, the uh, interaction state components. Um, we will have a, a separate video on each of these components, um, but I wanted to explain how the communication is done and how the component principle basically works. So uh, Again, uh, most like at least ninety percent of the functionality of the framework is uh, somehow contained inside components. Um, we want to be able to to think and work with them, and want to be able to kind of embrace how they how they work. Because um, as a designer, uh, you you don't want to be coding much. You you just want to be slapping these components onto different onto different actors, and then uh, these components will have all the functionality for you. And it will be doing exactly what you want to do, and this way you um, have a minimum amount of programming to do, and um, even yeah, even somebody with no programming uh, knowledge will be able to to slap components onto onto different things. So um, without any further question, uh, without any further conversation, I um, uh, yeah, I want to start off and um see you in the next episode